I don't even feel comfortable calling you Bill. I'm going to call you Mr. Shatner. That's good. Okay. You're going to make another movie, by the way. Are you? Yeah. Called. You can call me Mr. Shatner. Right? <laughs> You're good. Okay, so I'm a millennial. I was born in 1984. So what's a millennial? It's 70, 81 to 96. And that makes you how old? 39. Come on. Yeah. How old are you? 39. My God. Yeah, okay. I love this. Are we, like, having a moment? <laughs> It, but it's your moment. <laughs> yes, it's well, I want to tell you, Rescue 911, yeah. it really messed me up. I don't think enough people recognize that that show, it became this brand new era of reality TV, of trauma TV. Yeah, it is recognized as a beginning of what, what happened. And and the, the joy of that show was people who wrote in and said, you saved my life. About 3,000, we estimate we saved about 3,000 people's lives by the information we were given. There's one beautiful story about uh, 911. was a couple uh, uh, with children in a house had these terrible headaches. And the wife said, we better go to the hospital. And they left their children. Do you know the story? I know it. And they went into the waiting room in the hospital. And they were watching 911 while they were waiting for a doctor. And the 911 was a story about fumes in the house. And, and, and yeah, exactly. So they ran out of the hospital, ran, drove back to their home, and rescued their kids. Isn't that a great story? It's, it's truly amazing. You know that story. I remember, I remember everything from that. Well, that, that's not a messed up memory. That's a functional memory. Well, I appreciate you. At the age of 40, you begin to forget, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think I already do forget a little bit. But that's one of the that's one of the tendrils of of concern. As you get older, you begin to forget. Like, what's your name again? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I got you. Um, I actually have always been bad with names, but I did. I wanted to pivot really quick to Captain Kirk because the 30 year anniversary of his television death is coming up. Did they make the right move there, killing off Captain Kirk, or what? Well, as far as I'm concerned, they made a mistake. Uh, well, they were concerned about box office, so they turned it over to the next cast, and the next cast didn't make any more money than we did at the box office. So they realized there was a glass ceiling of who would go. Well, then what happened was J.J. Abrams made it a ride, made it a wonderful ride, and it made a lot of money. Yeah, yeah and uh, just... The film, You Can Call Me Bill, it was beautiful, I have to say. It it really felt like I. it was therapeutic for you when you were speaking. I was hanging on to your every word. I mean, did did he get it right? Did Alexander get this right? Yeah, that's great. That's a great compliment because uh, it was coming from my heart. It, it, it really, I, I had tears in my eyes. So, um, also... I am friends with your biggest fan, Frank Morano from WABC uh, Radio. He's very upset that he couldn't be here today, um, but he sends his love. So if you want to just say hi to Frank, I'm, I'm sure he'd love it. Hi, Frank. Love back. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. And is there anything that you, you'd you like to add? I mean, I know you're, you're, you, you speak about the environment. You speak about science. Do you think people are listening? Do you think this is resonating with people? Well, uh, yes, those are the major subjects for all our lives uh, so what I'm saying is an, uh, unusual except that I have this microphone to be able to say it out loud and the, the conditions of the world are well known and um, I just I know there's people so I, I want to wrap this up but do you think that people get impressions of you right when they do your voice and they drag words out slowly and they and they have like the depth do you think they get it right I, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, okay, amazing, amazing. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations. So, I saw the film. I loved it. Thank you. Okay, so William Shatner, he's clearly an icon. I mean, what what drew you to him? What is your, your backstory with him? Tell me everything. <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm very interested in these... Uh, you know, the, the, the people, the actors, the directors who essentially sort of transcend their medium and become, as you said, in a way sort of iconic, but that become part of our collective consciousness. And uh, I was really interested in the man and sort of trying to, I mean, this is a guy who's been acting since he was six. So we're talking about an 87 year career, right? I mean, he's worn literally a, a thousand masks. 
And so how do you get this guy to sort of take off the masks and reveal who's behind that? So that was part of the the incent the the, the, the impetus really for the journey, yeah. Did you feel immense pressure here just to get everything right? No, not really. I mean, you know, at the end of the day it's your it's it's a human being that you have in front of you, right? And so when you when you connect on that on that level, I mean clearly he was game, he wanted to do this, he was ready to do this. Uh, he was ready to take off the masks, and and there was nothing taboo, uh, you know. Like I could literally go anywhere, and he was willing to go there as well. We went to some pretty dark places, as you've seen. You know, the chapter on loneliness is is really quite dark, um, and uh, the film, I think you can make the argument, is is really about death in in many in many ways. So, uh, so it was really special, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and can you just share with me just a, a, a William Shatner moment from filming that we don't necessarily get to see on screen? Sure. Uh, well, the, the thing about, about Bill is that uh, if you don't pay attention, he will crack a joke or make fun of you in a split second. And, and then you, you'll go like, wait a minute, that was, that was a joke, right? <laughs> so you have to be really fast. You have to be just really on your toes with him all the time. And he's just wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations. It's so beautiful, the film. So beautiful. By the way, the human brain barely works as it is. So the people say, oh, let me get high and get closer to the universe. <laughs> if you stir chemicals into a brain that barely works, you're not getting closer to anything. Okay. I was not expecting you to Okay, I just thought I'd put that out there. So, yeah, I'm always thinking about objective reality. That's so funny. I this universe. No, no, you're overthinking this. Okay? We haven't looked very much. So, here's the analogy. You ready? You go to the ocean shore, get a get an empty glass, scoop up some water, and look at it and conclude there're no whales in the ocean. That cup has sampled the ocean as much as we have sampled the universe in the search for life. If you've only looked, yeah. that's good. Yeah. That's good. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's good. Okay. That's good. And that, that reference comes from the SETI people, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence up in uh, Northern California. They're thinking about all the ways, are, are we searching at the right time, on the right frequency, with the right technology? Think about it. Suppose aliens sent messages to us 2,000 years ago using radio waves. Well, there's the Roman Empire, there's, you know, there, there's Egypt, and, they, and no one would have heard them. And they would conclude, oh, there's no intelligent life on Earth, but they'd be wrong, because you need the technologies to match up. So, you want to know why? I, I'm, no, no, I'm saying, I will not ask the question, why haven't we seen anybody yet? until we have searched most of the universe, and we have not. You make a really good point, absolutely. And, and just pivoting to the reason that we're all here today, your friend, Bill, I guess, which feels very strange. I'm not gonna call him Bill, you call him Bill. I, I, don't, know, I don't know if I'm comfortable calling him Bill either. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. Have you seen the film yet? Yes, yes I have, yes. Uh, it is, uh, I'm hosting the Q&A after the film, and the film has left me very little to talk to him about. <laughs> it goes every place that matters to him. So I'm, I'm going to have to think very hard about how to conduct that conversation. Yeah. Well, congratulations on everything, all of your success.